In this new session, we are going to show how to easily build and debug an unsecure application that is going to use the security services of the Secure Manager that we have just installed on our device. As mentioned by my friend and colleague Mina in part one, the Secure Manager comes with two types of packages, the Secure Manager Access Kit, SMAK, and the Secure Module Development Kit, SMDK. The Secure Manager Access Kit, SMAK, is used to develop non-secure application using Secure Manager Security Services via PSA APIs. The Secure Module Development Kit, SMDK, is used to develop trusted applications, also called the Secure Modules. Both development kits are delivered with a full set of tools, software, and documentation and examples. In this presentation, we are going to focus on the SMAK and on how to develop applications which use the security services. The SMAK is composed of Secure Manager, STM32Cube Embedded Firmware Package containing templates and examples to develop a non-secure application, and scripts to provision install the Secure Manager. STM32 Trusted Package Creator to build signed and encrypted images. STM32 Cube Programmer to program signed and encrypted images. STM32 Cube MX to configure and generate non secure application code using Secure Manager APIs. And finally, the supported IDs like STM32 Cube ID, IR, or Kyle. We have already installed the Secure Manager, so let's focus on how easily you can develop and debug your non-secure application, which can leverage the security services from the Secure Manager. In fact, as the security services are handled by the Secure Manager, developers can simply focus on the non-secure application just as if there wasn't any security at all and use the PSA API calls to access the security services without facing any complexity related to trust zone and security in general. A quick overview of the SMAK delivery main resources. Well, we have the Secure Manager API middleware, which will be the interface for the user application for the PSA APIs. Then the SMAK user application code example, which demonstrates how to use the different PSA APIs, and this will be the focus of our hands on. Then you have the DA folder, uh, DA for the bug authentication, those resources allows you to configure and control the debugging regression capabilities of your platform. And finally, the SM Secure Manager folder with the Secure Manager itself, but also with the resources which allows you to configure and install the Secure Manager itself. So in the previous end zone, the Secure Manager has been provisioned and installed and the device has been put in trust zone closed. At this point, the application development flow is really simple and the security complexity is totally transparent to the developer. You just need your favorite ID, in our case the STM32Cube ID, to develop and debug your non-secure application. Let's do it using the SMAK non-secure application example provided in our package. Let's open STM32Cube ID. Click on File, Open Projects from File System, click on Directory and navigate to the Workshop folder, STM32Cube Firmware H5, Projects, STM32H573IDK, Applications, ROT, Root of Trust, SMAK Appli, and STM32Cube ID. Select this folder and click on Finish. We have imported our SMAK Appli example in the STM32Cube ID. As additional note, in the same SMAK Appli folder that we have just selected, 
you also find the readme file which provides additional info on the project itself and on how to use it. You can see that this project shows how to use secure services offered by the secure manager to non-secure application through PSA APIs, internal trust storage, cryptography, initial attestation, firmware update, and will display a menu on the console allowing to use the secure services themselves. Select the project and click on the hammer button in the toolbar or right click on the project and click on build project. It might take some time, so please feel free to stop the presentation and restart once the build has been completed. Okay, no errors, no warnings. We are ready to load and debug this non secure application in a Trust Zone Closed State device. Right click on the project. Debug as STM32C C++ application and please make sure to select the second debug configuration which name finishes with download debug. In fact, we want to download our non-secure application as we were in a device without Trust Zone enabled. Click OK. At this point, if you are asked to update the ST-Link firmware version, please make sure to do it. Stop the presentation if needed and restart once done. Also, just as a reminder, you have access to all the slides with the step-by-step -step instructions in case you get lost during the hands-on sessions. Let's activate the debug perspective. You should already have your TerraTerm open, otherwise please open it connect to the ST-Link COM port and set the serial configuration as before. 115-200, 8-bit, no parity, 1-stop-bit. Now, in the main.c, put a breakpoint at line 162, double-clicking on the left, Run Resume or press F8. Then step over or press F6 and you should see the printing text coming in TerraTerm. We are now simply debugging, I can step in, step over, as we usually do for non-trust zone devices, even though we are actually in a trust zone closed product state. Let's terminate the debugger clicking on the red square or Ctrl key plus F2. Our debug session of non-secure application is completed. As already said, this SMAK application example shows how to use the secure services offered by the secure manager to the non-secure applications through PSA APIs. You can explore the code to understand how those APIs are called and used. And uh, on the TerraTerm console, you have the chance to test the different services, internal trust storage, cryptography, initial attestation, and firmware update. The last item, option five, does not use PSA APIs and it's just meant to display the X509 certificates provided with the platform. Through the option one, you access the internal trust storage menu, which provide example of dynamic writing into the trust storage, example of accessing pre-provisioned data, factory data, so, for instance, you can write a new data in the internal trust storage, one new data set. You can retrieve this data, two new data get. You can remove it, and so on. As additional note, the Secure Manager provides the ability to pre provision the internal trust storage using a simple tool provided by ST. Uh, we are not covering this tool in this presentation, but you can find more information on how to use it in our documentation and wiki pages. Let's type X 
to go back to the previous menu and we can explore the cryptography options that are implemented through PSA APIs and that you can test. Going back, the option 3, Initial Attestation, provides Initial Attestation token signed by the device Unique Authentication Key. And going back again, the option 4, Firmware Update, covers the Firmware Update PSA APIs used to download and install a new non-secure application, a new revision of the Secure Manager, and or a new revision of the STU root, the Updatable Root of Trust. Feel free to test these features and to have a look at how the PSA APIs are used and called in the SMAK example application code. Well, let's say that the development has been completed, our application has been tested, and we want to put the device in the field. So we want to move from trust zone closed to closed product state. But before putting the device in a closed product state, we have in fact to install the application properly. Why? In uh, Trust Zone Closed, the image signature is in fact not verified to make the development completely transparent for the user. The image is in fact not signed when we download and debug using our ID. But once we put the device in a closed state, we need to have the image signed and properly installed, and the image header metadata properly stored in Flash. To do that, we can use a ready-to-use download script, which will properly install our current firmware image so that our root of trust, the STU root, will be able to verify the image at the next reset. Let's navigate the workshop folder, STM32 cube firmware H5, projects, STM32 H573i DK, applications, root of trust, SMK Apple. And let's launch the download.bat script. The image is now successfully downloaded and installed and is ready to be validated by the STU root at the next reset. We can now go back to Cube Programmer, reconnect to the board, select OB Option Bytes tab, Product State, and we can set the device state to closed, 0x72. Click on the Apply button and the closed product state is set. It's normal now to get a few errors because of the debug disconnection. At this point, the debug access is not allowed anymore in non secure. The only way would be to use the debug reopening through debug authentication feature and we'll see how to do that in the next presentation. So, thank you for your attention so far. Let's move now to the latest technical session presented by my colleague Rishi.